So if I did this right, then I should get, uh, so if I put x equals 0, this is 0, 0, it's coming out 0. Again, there is a mistake. <laughs> you see? That's why I do this. You catch your mistake this way for the answer. Okay, let's back up, back up, back up, back up. Where is the mistake here? Let's look here. Um, ah, here it is. I caught it. Wonderful. This angle and this angle aren't the same. Ah, the picture wasn't good. My picture wasn't good, 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 okay? This angle is what? Well, this one is a 90 degree angle, okay? How do I know it's a 90 degree angle? Because when you do the cross product, right, DL, I'm uh, sorry, uh, this way, DL cross into R hat, the magnetic field created by these two should be perpendicular, right, to the plane of those two. So this one is a 90 degree angle. This is, I'm really showing you here how you could make easily a mistake here if you're not careful. So this is a 90 degree angle, and then this is a 90 degree angle to that one. So I sloppily drew it, therefore it made me think that this and this are the same. Now let's analyze. If this is theta and I got to take cosine of theta, right, to get the x component. So this angle, and then you can draw the vertical like this. This is theta, let's say. This one is 90 minus theta. This is theta. This is 90 minus theta. So this, this is really not theta. It's 90 minus theta. Theta, 90 minus theta, theta. So this is theta, and this is uh, 90 minus theta right here. So if I'm going to take cosine of theta, cosine theta, I got to take cosine of this angle, not the cosine of this angle. You see? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I always like this because you get to check your answer, go back and see what you made mistake where you went wrong. And if your picture is sloppy, you will definitely make a mistake. So cosine of theta is therefore going to be what? Well, this theta is going to be same as this theta, right? So cosine of theta is going to be r divided by little r. So instead of x divided by little r, it's r divided by little r. So where is that going to change? Uh, this is it. It's just going to change this thing. Instead of x, it's going to be r. So what's going to happen? If you have r, and then you're going to have r here, and that's going to be pi r, so it's going to be, end up being r squared here. This is so beautiful, I can't explain the beauty of this in words. Now find the limit of this as x goes to zero. <laughs> okay, look what happens. Mu zero i of r squared over, put x is zero, so you get r squared to the three halves, which is r cubed. Oh, you know what? I forgot the 2 somewhere. I forgot to carry the 2. It was 2 cosine. 2. So this one should be 2. This one should be 2. So I forgot to carry the 2. So this one now is going to be mu 0 i r squared over 2 r cubed, which is mu 0 i over 2 r. Which is what? That is exactly the same as what we got for the closed loop. Okay? Awesome. That's perfect. 
So the limit of this as x goes to 0 gives us the same answer for a whole circle. How about the limit of this as x goes to infinity? Again, this becomes a large number, so this is insignificant. So we can see the behavior of this. So this is insignificant. x squared to the 3 halves, that's x cubed. OK, so that's kind of interesting. It's telling us that the magnetic field of a coil as a function of x, when x equals 0, you have the magnetic field starts out at that number. Then as x is incre increasing, it's dropping as some general function. And then as x goes to infinity, it drops as a 1 over x cubed. So which one drops quicker? The magnetic field of a coil away, uh, infinitely far away from the coil, or a line, the magnetic field away from the line, infinitely far away. The, the coil drops as 1 over x cubed. The line drops as what? 1 over x squared. So try to make sense. Why does the coil drop quicker as you go away from the coil? The why is always the hardest question to answer, right? It's easier to do the math. As you go away from it, it looks like maybe as you go away from it, the coil begins looking more like a small little point charge, whereas the line, if I go away from it, it still has uh, some, some uh, dimension left to it. I don't know if that's a good answer. Um, perhaps also here, you have cancellation taking place more. Whereas the line, you don't have any cancellation taking place. You see here, the y component is canceling. Uh, let's do it this way here. Let, if I go farther out, is there more cancellation taking place? Let's answer it that way. If I go way farther out, what, what's the direction of the B field of this going to be? Ninety degrees from that. Here, 90 degrees from that, their y component is going to cancel. Their only their x component survives. There you go. That's the answer. The coil, when you go away from the coil, it cancels itself much faster because primarily the B field is in the y direction. Only the x component survives. For a line, if I go away from it, and the line has a current I, it's carrying a current I, is there any cancellation taking place? No. Each element of the line, no matter where it is, creates a B field that's in the same direction. They just keep adding. So if I go away from it, there's no cancellation taking place. It's just that I'm getting farther from it, you see? So that explains why it goes as 1 over x squared. <clears throat> okay, cool. So that makes sense.